Keith Landers, along with his wife Desiree, opened their small sawmill on Prince of Wales Island in the mid-90s. K&D Lumber is one of eight small sawmills left in the Thorn Bay area. They make red cedar shingles and lumber. And then we're allowed, we're allowed uh, four one-inch knots uh, on the backside of a clear board. Selling primarily to companies in Canada. I've got enough timber right now to last me till the end of next season and then, then we're out. Think of what was happening 500 years ago in America and the tree was there. Centuries old trees, including the prized Sitka spruce. It's just a tremendous tree. Provide crucial winter habitat for the Sitka deer because the canopy prevents large amounts of snow from building up below. They can live here just eating berry shoots and, and uh, forbs, you know, from this kind of forest. But the habitat, the whole ecosystem, is destroyed after logging. Some of these trees might have been the first of their species since glaciation. So you'll never have that, re that, you will never see another tree like that again. The deer on Prince of Wales Island are essential for the wolf population. Deer are also important to subsistence and sport hunters. The Forest Service has a responsibility to maintain a healthy population of both while implementing logging projects. Mud, fish oil perfume, dissonance. Who are you? It looks like chaos, the constant movement, but there's a rhythm to it all, and Jack Schultheis is in his element. Come on, I'll show you. And they know this comes out of there. Check all of it. Yeah. Fishing is a tough business. You check that. Especially in a place like Imonic, with the high cost of electricity, air freight that costs more than a dollar a pound to bring goods in, and fuel at more than six dollars a gallon. A losing proposition, so why bother to try? There isn't anything else. Sony ain't gonna build a TV manufacturing plant here. They're not gonna drill for oil here. This is all we got. The ammonic plant lost nine million dollars last year. And if it weren't for subsidies from the CDQ program, it would go under. And gone with it, the millions it pays out for fish and jobs. You missed the spot. Sophie Ann Moore has two kids. And like a lot of the workers here, she's a single parent. Yeah, I'd like to further my education and move on out of here. And this is a good helping stepping stone. For just about everyone here, Quick Pack is a stepping stone out of poverty. Every one of these bikes belongs to a kid with a job. Kids like Jacob Kamaroff. Jacob has worked at Quick Pack since he was 14. Good morning, Monarch Fisheries. This is Jacob speaking. How may I help you? In the afternoon, he trains other kids to answer the phone, a job Jacob really likes. I wake up early for school now, I'm always on time. I try to stay organized. Jacob has impressed the admin office with his professionalism. Pardon? Can you repeat that? And the way he puts family first. Joe Mike started to work here last summer. He's 14 now. Before that, when he was too young to hold a job, he wanted one so badly he offered to work for free. They get motivated. They don't have to go to their parents and say, Ma, can I have a dollar? <laughs> it, it, it's really great for them. But truth be known, many of the kids here help support their families. Elders in Ammonic believe the youth employment program has cut down on vandalism. Quick Pack says it's noticed something else. And for whatever reason, the kids that are in this program, we've not had any suicides of the participants in it, which we feel is a very positive sign. Honestly, I lost track after the fourth one. Maggie Isidore is from a village where there have been a lot of suicides. She says her job boxing frozen salmon has literally been a lifeline. When I'm not working, I think about all the people that I lost, and that hurts me a lot because some of them, I was pretty close to them. At 14, I lost my best friend to suicide. Maggie says she's not alone. Most of the kids she works with have had to grow up fast. I have a lot of dreams. My main dream right now is 
to give my daughter the things I wanted growing up. Her daughter needs lots right now, and Maggie says the $10 an hour she earns here at Quick Pack has made all the difference. You have to be creative to, to pull this off out here. This isn't a by the book situation at all. Because the bottom line here isn't about profit, but keeping hope alive. Big marijuana, big mistake. With just days before the general election, radio host and translator John Active is getting information to voters. In the past, it was not adequate, not at all. The 66-year-old says Yupik speakers don't receive enough election information in their own language. Some of the angry voters have called into the station. He looks like he really didn't know what he was voting for, that he had heard a little something about it on the radio, but he didn't understand what, what the uh, initiative was, the proposition was. But this election, the KYUK team are making a push to get more details out in UPIC. People are appreciative, especially the natives who don't ha uh, speak English. The Division of Elections has also provided a CD with translations from the Vote Yes and Vote No campaigns for all of the ballot measures. The state says it's been working hard to implement a court order to provide accurate written and oral translations after native groups sued. I did see some elders that did have a difficult time understanding the ballot. Bernard Mayle, the assistant city clerk in Bethel, is a translator for voters. And, and that's this um, ballot saying this is a state election ballot. I enjoy it and it makes me feel good that I, I'm helping an elder or somebody that wants to put in their vote and help them understand it. He says the people needing assistance are usually elders in their 70s and 80s. We don't have a um, epic word for certain political definitions, so um, we have to do a, a little more explaining. Ballot for the marijuana tax is up yun al When you're translating complicated um, ballot language initiatives or referendums, it's especially challenging. Former Bethel representative Mary Sattler says the state should make a renewed effort every election cycle to ensure the interpretations are accurate. There are a lot of dialects, there are a lot of regionalizations of the language and you just need to really make sure that words um, that you're using in Yupik are appropriate to that village or that region. <laughs> Six minutes. It might be a complicated language to translate. But that shouldn't mean the speakers have less of a right to understand election materials. All the sights and sounds of Denver are joined now at times by something else. Within the first like 20 minutes of getting here, we smelled marijuana. The marijuana industry in Colorado is growing fast. $24, that's after tax. Bringing jobs, tax revenue, and tourists to the state. It's in a childproof case. The drug is commercialized. Yeah, 10 milligrams is one dose. It's accessible. We're talking mass commercialization. It's exactly what mother of four, Gina Carboni, is worried about. Eight-year-old knows the smell of it. We drive by pot shops all the time. It's heartbreaking. Walter Snyder has not fished at all this summer. It's been a huge sacrifice. I, I love fish camp. These racks would normally be full by this time of the year. Because we used to catch them left and right, and we used to fill up our racks with kings. My parents used to when I was a little, little kid going on up. Walter hopes to get some fishing in soon. He's followed the talk on the radio about the prospect of violence, and he's glad it's just talk. I was hoping that, I hope it was just a rumor. Because if they try to do that, that's wrong. Snyder says it's good the focus has now turned to fishing. But the late start makes it hard. The flies are starting to come out. The good drying weather will soon turn sour. The rhythms of the season, out of kilter, what was right and natural seemed suddenly wrong.